Soldier, that's a real yes. uniform. A lot of that is authentic. Wow. You've got the uh, 1917 Enfield rifle, which was the most common rifle of the war. This is the, uh, the rifle that Alvin York used in his famous attack. This is the 1903 Springfield. These are all bolt action rifles. Everybody had a bolt action rifle which in some form or another was based on the German Mauser. Everybody copied the German. <laughs> <laughs> they redesigned it a bit and made it look different so they wouldn't look like they were copying it. But yeah, so the bolt action rifle, which was a tremendous improvement over previous rifles. You're gonna see some people over here like single shot muskets. So you're standing out in the battlefield with one of these jokers. And if you wanna load it, you got to stand up and you're doing this number in the middle yep. of the fight. Right. And then you just got one shot, you got one shot, and then it's all over you. With a bolt action, right down, preferably. But you can stay on target and continue to fire four or five times. The British Enfield rifle was probably the most effective, not because it was more accurate or anything but because it had a 10 round magazine. So you could stay on target until you exhausted that 10 round magazine. Our rifles had five rounds and the Germans did too. So. Thank you. Powder in the pan. Close the prison. If the pan is dirty, it will not spark, it will not shoot. If the flint is dirty, it will not spark, it will not shoot. If the flint is dull, it will not spark, it will not shoot. If the touch hole is plugged, I will get a flash but not a fire, I will not shoot. A lot to go wrong. So let's see if it goes right. And that's all there is to it.
skirmishers and they advance forward over the spears and fire to the battle buddy, one loading and one shooting. That uh, volunteer job is to shoot officers and sergeants and destroy the command and control of the enemy. The sixth company is the one the six foot tall.
you know, today is April 9th, 1865, and I'm afraid I have some sad news for our townspeople, our troops. General Lee's been surrounded in Appomattox, and uh, got a telegraph that said he's meeting with General Grant today for the conditions of surrender. So I'm sure that he has no way out. The, the troops are dwindling. Uh, we were set up here as the 7th Virginia Company A from Madison, Company F, 7th Virginia from Green, and elements of 44th Virginia. We were sent up here to go to Company Gordonsville to secure the, the uh, train that hopefully was coming up from uh, Lynchburg. General Lee's army was going to meet here and hopefully get, get rations, but it turned out it wasn't happening. So I telegraphed back that that's not going to be the case, and so again, he has, he has no alternative but to surrender. So today is going to be a day that um, you'll remember, your descendants will remember, and so I just wanted to uh, let you know that that uh, we were a great country, and, and uh, it's changed and as, as we know. So. Um, Men are still proud. Morning. Uh, also, with the 44th, we have several members of 12th Virginia and also the uh, 47th Virginia. Uh, what we're going to. Sorry. 13th Virginia. And if you notice, we got some guys in the long uniforms. Uh, yeah, they took the oath, uh, but we haven't got their uniforms. Uh, we're going to demonstrate, uh, first of all, the, uh, the loading in nine times each soldier during school of soldier was taught to load their musket, their rifle muskets, by the way, uh, the weapons here are rifle. Okay. They were taught to load in nine times, nine steps. Each soldier could fire two to three shots in one, in one minute. Okay. My first sergeant is going to demonstrate it for you so you all can see while they go through it. So, company. First step is to take the weapon, place it by your left foot, point the weapon out so that in case of an accidental discharge. The next step would be to what's called handle cartridge. Handle cartridge. They're going to reach into their car cartridge box and remove one paper cartridge and place it near to their mouth. The reason for that is in the next step. Tear cartridge. Tear the cartridge, which is why Civil War soldiers had to have at least two upper and two lower teeth so that they could tear the cartridge, and that will be placed by, uh, on their right hand. The next step is charge cartridge. They pour the char their powder down inside the barrel and push the bullet down inside the barrel as well. They were called mini balls, but they were not mini balls. They were actually bullet shaped. The reason they're called mini balls is thanks to the French because there was a captain named Jean-Claude Etienne Minet who came up with the idea of the mini ball, which could then be loaded into a musket easily, but when fired, the bullet would spin in the, uh, because of the rifling and have a much greater range than the smoothbore muskets that you saw in Juliana County. Draw the rammer. Draw the rammer, place it by the barrel. Next step. Ram the cartridge. Now they're going to ram the cartridge down, fully seat it, and withdraw the rammer about halfway back up. The next rammer. Very important step if they wanted to reload was to return their rammer. Some soldiers forgot to do this in battle and they found rammers stuck into trees in the battlefield. The next step, they prime. They're going to go to what's called cast about, reach into their cartridge box and withdraw one small percussion cap, brass percussion cap, and place it on the nipple of the weapon. Next step. Shoulder. <coughs> they are now ready to fire. Now how we fired is depending on how far away the enemy is. So if they're quite a ways away, the object is not to have the, company, the entire company unloaded at the same time. Not good. 
So if they were far enough away, we would start off with a company volley where all of the rifles were fired. Ready. 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 company volleys until the enemy got to a, to a place where we needed to make sure that, that the entire company was not unloaded at the same time. So the next step, what we, what we, call, what we call firing by rank, okay? Starting with the rear rank, then firing the front rank, and going back and forth, front rank and rear rank. watching his gun, his rear rank. He's not going to have the front rank fire immediately. He wants to make sure that the rear rank is partially loaded so that by the time the front rank fires, the rear rank is fully loaded and ready to go. Front rank. Front rank. A. A. Fire. Load. Okay. The enemy is getting closer. Time to put as much fire out as possible. So the next thing you're going to see is what's called firing by files. Firing by platoon. Or, I'm sorry, firing by platoon, you're right. We have two platoons here, first and second platoon. So the captain there is going to have each platoon fired so that you'll have one platoon loaded and one platoon firing. As long as possible, they would alternate first platoon, second platoon, first platoon, second platoon. Company, fire by platoon. Fire by platoon. First platoon. First platoon. Aim. Aim. Fire. Oh. Again, he's going to watch the first platoon to ensure that they are partially loaded before he goes ahead and fires the second platoon. comes time to firing by files. What's going to happen here, you're, you're going to see is they'll start at the right, the front and rear rank, the man will fire, then it'll go down the line to the left, and once that is accomplished, that's what's called firing, firing at will, at, at, at your fastest speed, okay, until they are told to cease fire. Muskets had a range of about effective range of three to four hundred miles. They could actually fire far, and there have been cases where they fired far. The average smooth bore was 7,500 yards, and it would go down the barrel, and you never know where it was going. But the rifle, rifle musket, very accurate. Well, the enemy's getting closer. The 
it's time to, it's, it's crunch time. It's so what the company is going to do now is they're going to fire one more volley, and then it's time to go hand to hand. Fire at me. <laughs> and of course, you always have someone in a green act, whatever, when we say fire at will, they say, where, which one's will? <laughs> Now it's time to get real serious. If you come around to the camp, you'll, if you can expect some of the equipment, you'll notice that the, uh, the, the bayonet is triangular shaped, which made a nice big hole that was hard to close and bled a lot. Charge! Charge! Bayonets! Ah! Go forward! 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 It's impressive. Oh. U.S. Army from 1936 to 1956 was the M1 Garand. Fires a 30-06 6 cartridge in an eight-round clip. Soldiers very quickly found out when you load this, you gotta be careful, you're gonna get your thumb caught in it. Only happened to me once. Thank you. 
When this fire is the last round, you'll hear a ping. A lot of soldiers said that that would give away your position. That was later proven to be a myth. Set up by the main entrance. Come by and see us. Clip back. Yeah, I'll get it. All right. What we are representing is uh, Vietnam in 1968. This is the M16A1, which was the main battle rifle of the U.S. military at the time. It has a 20-round magazine. It would fire in fully automatic or semi-automatic and uh, shot uh, 223 ammunition and then eventually they switched over to 556 ammunition and uh, they jammed a lot in the early stages of Vietnam until they eventually switched over the powder and it became more reliable over time so this is pretty much if you know uh, M16s nowadays they're all short and small with the M4 rifles this is the granddaddy of that rifle the, uh, the evolution has changed different things with the sights, the grips, and whatnot. So when you think of uh, anybody with an AR-15 or M-16 now, this is what it started off with. And you are empty after that 20 rounds. So then you would be going into your pouch here, pulling out another magazine, dropping the magazine, and reloading. Now the enemy on the other hand, they were using anything that they could get, such as the Mosin the gun, which either they got them from the Chinese, the Russians, pretty much any communist country that could give ammunition or weapons to the Viet Cong at the time, they would uh, get these rifles. Now these rifles, this one particularly was designed at the end of World War II, uh, it was a modified version about 10 years ago, of the full rifle length, uh, has a folding bayonet on it, and then uh, they, they say kept the same cartridge, which was 7.62 by 54R, which is a pretty big round versus the 5.56 rounds that we were firing. versus a semi-automatic. So their rate of fire is a lot slower. And it's only five rounds versus 20. Any questions? That's the, uh, we got? We got nobody else left. So that's all the firing demonstrations for now. Colonial militia. This is an average working guy from the frontier. Militia duty is like jury duty. You get called up, you do your duty. When you're done, you go back home to your farm, your business, whatever. Bring everything from home. They will not give me jack squat. All right, so I have to bring my own firearm, my own kit, my own powder horn. If I'm lucky, I'll get gunpowder, lead. I got four of my own bullets. The guns are made by a craftsman, one at a time. They are not standardized. My buddy's ammunition will not fit in my barrel and mine will not fit in his. So when I'm out, I am down. So, this is a 6.2 caliber smoothbore. We liked in the Frontier because it's a 6.2 caliber rifle. It's also a 20 gauge shotgun. 
I can go for squirrel, small game, or I can go for deer and elk. Think ahead because you've got to load accordingly. So for the militia, combat, I'm going to take my powder horn and I'm going to use a powder measure. I want to know how much gunpowder goes in the gun so it doesn't blow up in my face. We do not pour directly from the powder horn. Then I would take a lead ball and a piece of cloth called a patch and put that on the barrel. I would start it down the barrel. And if you're lucky, no one's shooting at you while you're doing this. Then the ramrod. At that time, it's called a wiping stick because you use it to clean the gun. So you seat it well. Put the ramrod back. Half cock is safety. A little powder in the horn or in the pan. Roughly from a horn with powder. Full cock. Now, if the frizzen is dirty, it will not spark, it will not fire. If the flint is dirty, it will not spark, it will not fire. If the flint is dull, it will not, not spark, spark, it, it will, will not fire. fire. If the touch hole is plugged, it will not fire. There's a lot to go wrong, and people depended on this for their life. So the fact that they survived fascinates me. Well, let's see how this one works. And that's all there is to it. All right. Uh, the Frenchman. Oh, here they come. All right. Is this where we cuss out the French? Yeah. <laughs> uh, depends. When I'm doing French and Indian, yes. So I'm doing Rev Ward, no. Captain Miko, and uh, we have a single company formed here, made up of several different units, the 7th Virginia Company A, the 7th Virginia Company F, the 44th Virginia, the 12th Virginia, the 13th Virginia, and the 47th Virginia. So what we're going to do is a firing demonstration where it goes through, goes through several different ways to fire, and uh, uh, but first we're going to show you how to load. How to load. So Sergeant. 
That's your cuff? Soldier. Yep. Arm. So the soldier was taught to load in nine times. And so the captain's gonna, as we go through, we're gonna demonstrate how to load here. So the first command's gonna be load. Load. He's gonna take the right way up in front of him. He's gonna take take his right hand. He's gonna take it on the cartridge box. Next. Handle. Parker. He's gonna pull out a, a cartridge. He's gonna take a grain of powder in it. Then he will let it be carried. He's gonna hold it near his mouth. Next. Tear. Cartridge. He's gonna tear that cartridge. One of the requirements is he had to have two front teeth. Charge. Cartridge. He's gonna charge the cartridge. Withdraw ram. <laughs> Just take the ram rod out and it's gonna get ready. Ram cartridge. Now it's gonna ram the cartridge, which has the grain of powder plus the mini ball that would be inside of it. Return ram. Return the ram is very important. Otherwise, you can lose that right when you fire. Prime. I'm gonna bring the rifle up. Gonna use the cap. Think of it as, if, for those of us who know, it's called a play with cap guns. That's basically what it's gonna do. It, it's gonna fire and it's gonna make a spark and ignite the powder. Shoulder arm. And now, the company's finally ready to fire. The trained soldier fired for two to three shots in a minute. And uh, once they got proficient with it, and as you'll see, everybody's gonna load at their time. So, first up, there's different ways to, to have the company fire, and it depended upon the scenario and what, what it called for. First, we're going to fire by company, so that's everybody in the, in the two ranks. And company, fire by company, ready, ready, ready. Hey, hey. They've just fired the entire company all at once. It was a good volley. What's the problem in increasing enemy troops on the field? They're unloaded, and the enemy could either fire back at them or they could charge at them. So, that was one way to fire. We're going to show you next how to fire by rank. As the enemy got closer, it, it was very important that you tried to have one part of your command always loaded. You're going to start with the rear rank. Does anybody know why the rear ranks would be first? Be protected by the front row. Exactly. You want that front rank to be ready. To, to be ready. If, if there's a sudden charge, they can at least put some some rifle fire down range. Fire by rank. Fire rear by rank. Rear rank. Ready. Ready. Hey. Hey. Fire. Good. So the, what the captain is going to try to do, if he can, is as the rear rank is loading, okay. when they get to the point when they're about halfway reloaded, then he'll give the command for the front rank to fire. Front rank. Front rank. Hey. Hey. Fire. Load. All right. Now. Our company is split into two platoons. So we're gonna next we're gonna try firing by platoons. Your first platoon is always gonna be on the right end of the, of the company, and you have your, your second platoon on the left. And then you can alternate in between the two companies as, as you uh, as you're firing at the enemy. Fire by platoon. Fire by platoon. First platoon. First platoon. A. A. Fire. Oh. And again, this is another way to ensure that some of the company is always loaded should something happen. Should there be a sudden charge or whatever. Second platoon. Second platoon. Hey. Hey. Fire. Load. 
All right, the last way to fire, or that we're going to show you, is called firing by files. And the command's going to be fired by files from the right. So, it's, so a file is two men, the front rank man front, and the rear rank man. It's going to start from the right, and it's going to go by file down the line. And ideally, by the time you reach the end, what everybody else is doing after they fire that first volley, they're going to be firing at will. And then, fire by files to the right. Fire by files to the right. The men, the men, fire. And unless they hear the command, they're going to be firing at will. So they're going to work with their file partner, rear rank or front rank man, and they're loading and firing in relatively uh, at the same pace. Um, having one of them loaded at, at any given time. imagine is the enemy's firing back at us <laughs> so we're doing okay for now but realistically historically uh, we'd be taking hits people getting killed fire by company fire by company ready ready, ready. Yeah, you won't get any more 
strawberry jam. directly behind you guys, come by and see us. The Vietnam era, we were doing about 1969, uh, which we started to phase in carbine rifles. So this is pretty much uh, just a carbine of the M16A1. It's known as the XM177E2. So this is the granddaddy to the M4 rifle that we have today, that we use for the US military. Uh, except for nothing plastic except for here and here. Nowadays we have this plastic, this plastic, and it's just a light rifle, so it's got a little bit more heft to it, especially with the moderator on it. Uh, and then we have also our captured weapon, which is a Mosin Nagant. Uh, the Viet Cong were using pretty much anything Russian or communist, uh, such as like World War II bolt actions, anything they could get their hands on really, even if they could make it, if they could found the ammunition for it. So I'm going to demonstrate the 20 round magazine. Uh, they shot 5.56 and 223. Early on it was just 223, and then eventually they phased in the 5.6 ammunition. Uh, this one is a 7.16 by 54R, which is pretty much a hunting round, as we know. So, Similar, uh, arms, or? Um, it's, it's, it's so like, 
Right, so on yours, I get a point for the Hardy's Gill. Which one has the shoulder arm on this side? Gill. That's his bicep.